This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you are in the future because you're listening to Christina Gomez and Shifting the Paradigm. Howdy, folks. This is Lou Elizondo, and you are listening to my very good friend, Christina Gomez, on Shifting the Paradigm. This is Ray Sobs from the Unex Network, and you're listening to Shifting the Paradigm with the intrepid Christina Gomez on the X. You're listening to the Unex Network, KUNX DV, Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome to Shifting the Paradigm. I'm Christina Gomez on the Paradigm Shift channel and on the X, the new mainstream KUNX digital broadcasting talk radio. We are about to embark on an hour and a half of UFO shenanigans and paranormal adventures. Right here is where we look and think outside the proverbial box. We jump down those rabbit holes where you get a red Tic Tac instead of a red pill. For those listening on KUNX Talk Radio and Affiliates, I have two other shows each week that only air on my YouTube channel. Mysteries with a History is live on Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. PST with my co-host Jimmy Church of Fade to Black Radio. And each week we cover a different topic in depth. On Fridays at 3 p.m. PST, the live show Strange Paradigms is where I cover all the strange weekly news and mysterious headlines from around the world. This show is simultaneously broadcasted on KUNX Talk Radio, Talk Stream Live, Paranormal Live Radio, and a affiliates. If you are watching after the premiere, please feel free to use the chapter indexes to skip over the commercial breaks on YouTube. Brandon Fugel, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, is my guest and we have a lot to talk about. Brandon, it's such a pleasure to have you on Shifting the Paradigm. How are you? Very good. It's good to join you and I'm looking forward to our discussion, answering questions, and diving into the reality of our scientific investigation at the most, I think, investigated paranormal hotspot on the planet, Skinwalker Ranch. So let's get into it. The mysteries and phenomena at Skinwalker Ranch don't stop happening when the TV show crew stops filming. So my first question relates to the time between the ending of filming for the last season to the present or up to the point of filming for a new season. Can you recall any major occurrences, developments, or breakthroughs that you can share with us? Uh, to a degree, yes. And and I think we, we look forward to revealing some of what has happened off season or some of what some of the things that we have discovered in reviewing surveillance footage and going back and and looking at the data. We have we've seen some surprising evidence and events captured that we didn't have the opportunity to really present uh, this this last season. So it, the investigation does continue 365 days a year. Um, you, our physicist, Eric Bard, is full-time. And I don't know that people realize that, but we have a full-time physicist and principal investigator in Eric Bard who runs the scientific investigation, has really put together the platforms, you know, our proprietary platforms for monitoring the phenomena and, and and also all of the other variables we're dealing with within this really interesting environment, this 512 acre piece of property that is sequestered in the middle of the Uinta Basin, surrounded by you know, Native American tribal land. So it, it, we have 
We have our full-time caretakers, you know, Candace Lindy, who is a published anthropologist, stationed there full-time, 365 days a year, conducting research with us. Uh, Tom Lewis, who is a technologist, who is also assisting. We have our security detail, of course, Dragon and Caleb that run rotations and are constantly watching uh, from a surveillance and a security standpoint, and really health and safety uh, standpoint. And then, of course, uh, engaging Tom Winterton, who's been there since April of 2016, along with you know, my beloved Jim Morse, my ranch manager, who has known me since I was 18 years old. He was my first developer client in commercial real estate. A lot of people don't know that, and it hasn't come out in the series, but Jim was the first big client that took a risk on me as a young 18 year old commercial real estate broker wanting to jump into leasing and selling office parks. Uh, Jim was under construction on a six story um, office building in our suburban market and gave me a chance to represent him and the master plan of that project. And I will be forever grateful. Uh, he is a master networker. He loves the Native American community. It has deep, deep connections uh, with you know the Navajo, with the Ute tribe, has raised millions of dollars in service to, to, to scholarships and really helping to, to elevate uh, that community. And I'm really thankful for the effort that he's done, the effort that he, he's put forward to, to really engage the community and help us uh, pull together uh, all of the, the data and the historical uh, narrative, as well as the, the, the community relations aspect associated with being a good neighbor and trying to, to be better stewards over this very unique piece of property. Um, so it's it, it, we have a fantastic team year round. And, and of course, Dr. Taylor is stationed there three to four months of the year, literally lives on site uh, and is collaborating with uh, Eric Bard and Tom Dragon, Caleb, Candace, Tom and the team. It's it's an incredible multidisciplinary team effort to truly document the reality of the phenomenon. And it really does show on the TV show. And I and many viewers are intensely curious about the structure theorized to be a, me a metallic dome-like object within the Mesa Ridge and the experiments with the smoke and dye and the metal extracted during the horizontal drilling. Since the right. end of filming, have the team found out more about this structure and the possible cavernous space around it? And if so, what are those findings and theories? Good question. We've conducted additional tests. We look forward to making the, 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 the findings of those tests public and, and keeping everyone informed. We're also right now in the middle of, uh, of digging deeper, both literally and figuratively, and, and really exploring that region of the ranch, which, which holds, I think, some real secrets and and will hopefully reveal insights uh, that will, will help us understand the nature of what we're dealing with. Something is going on. I mean, Christina, when, when we were conducting the, uh, the exploratory, you know, drill into the Mesa biopsy, if you will, I don't think it was a coincidence that Tom Lewis, unfortunately, had a a cardiac arrest that he ended up having essentially a a heart attack and had to be run to the hospital by dragon uh it we're still very concerned about really that event the implications and closely monitoring tom's recovery and and hope that this never happens again but it it, it gets to the point where even though correlation is not causation, there's enough correlation happening over and over to to point toward you know a you know a common theme or at least a a pattern that is emerging within the data that is helping us understand and and hopefully will help us uh, avoid challenges or, or at least better equip our people. 
Yeah, that was very scary. And I'm so glad that he turned out okay. Now, the procurement and investment into taking ownership of the ranch obviously wasn't something that you rushed into. It was a bold move. And I'm sure some of your peers in the real estate industry might have warned you of it being a money pit. So I'd like to ask you if there was one key thing, one specific piece of information that tipped the scales and you pulling the trigger on the purchase, maybe something told to you by Robert Bigelow or a member of the its team or someone else that cemented the idea in your mind? Good question. Uh, I didn't intend to ever reveal my identity as the owner of the ranch. And I, I did not want anyone in the commercial real estate or the business community at large to be aware that I was the owner of this, this enigmatic piece of property uh, with a controversial uh, history. Uh, I, I really wanted to stay private and keep you know, my investigation and research uh, secret. I, I didn't have any intention of, of really taking it public uh, for a number of reasons. I, primarily, I, I, I simply didn't want it to, to distract from my professional obligations and endeavors. I didn't want people to question my credibility uh, within the business community. These are topics that a lot of people avoid. They are frontier topics, to put it mildly. And there is a very storied history associated with this property. I, I was intrigued when I was introduced to Robert Bigelow and had the opportunity to fly to Las Vegas uh, to meet with him at his Bigelow Aerospace Compound, which is just a, a phenomenal facility. I mean, a half a million square feet of state-of-the-art buildings that house full-scale space stations and space habitats that will, I think, be deployed ultimately you know, uh, on the the lunar surface and and hopefully to Mars. It, we, they, he already has one of his beam modules up on the International Space Station. But to walk through that facility to, and to see uh, Bob Bigelow and his commitment to to not only exploration but to see that in a lot of respects he he is he's very grounded in in the real world, uh, so to speak. And I. I, I was even more interested after meeting him and, and, and seeing that he and I had a lot in common. I felt he was a, and he is a kindred spirit, you know, made his fortune in commercial real estate development, hospitality, and has leveraged his success in the world of business in order to fund uh, some of these really exciting research projects into not only you know, Skinwalker Ranch, but also uh, consciousness, human consciousness. He's now uh, funding research into you know, life after death, any evidence of, of you know, life after death and, uh, and those topics as well, not to get off on a tangent. But I, I have great respect. And I think um, meeting him catalyzed my interest and desire to, um, to acquire this, this property and to to determine whether there was something really to it. I was skeptical. I told Mr. Bigelow and uh, Dr. Kelleher, who is his chief scientist for years and oversaw the, the Skinwalker Ranch project, I told them that I, I'd never seen a UFO, a ghost, an orb, or anything of the sort. And and I was skeptical. I, I happened to believe that there was most likely a, a natural prosaic explanation for what had been claimed. And and I was determined if I was if I was to purchase the property, I was determined to actually uh, bring an, a new team of of independent uh, scientists and researchers uh, to the property in order to to really document whether there was there was something really happening and and really getting to the bottom of it. I saw it as as a uh, a detective uh, moment to a degree. I love Sherlock Holmes, you know, was, was, uh, raised reading a lot of books, uh, in elementary school. I love literature. And, and this was a, a Sherlock Holmes novel brought to life. This you know, trying to, to unravel the mystery of this, this place that had been the source of so much speculation and some pretty incredible claims and disturbing claims. 
uh, over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And that's interesting. I, I wish we knew more of what he reported to the government after the NIDS investigation was finished. And, yep. you know, when I first heard there was a new owner, I thought it was Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures because he famously bought the notorious demon house and then it had demolished. And then he also has the spooky museum in Las Vegas. So. Have you been there? Have you been to the, the haunted museum there in Vegas? I have not. I have. How is it? And, uh, it was terrifying. I <laughs> there was <laughs> there were a few places in that museum that I found disturbing, and I'm the owner of uh, you know, arguably the most disturbing piece of property, you know, by some accounts on the planet. And I, yeah, <laughs> I found it really interesting. And not I, I, and I, I don't know Zach. I. I've never been part of any ghost hunting type of exercise. I have no interest, but I, I actually, I uh, was intrigued. Two of my dear friends uh, took my wife and I to the museum down there in Las Vegas uh, some months ago. Uh, so actually last year and as a, as a fun surprise activity. And I, yeah, it was, it was uh, it was an interesting experience. I'm not going back. Uh, I have no desire to ever go back into that place ever. Oh my goodness! And for someone that owns Skinwalker Ranch, that's really saying something. Yeah, I yeah, I, no interest. I'm not going to. I yeah, but it, but it was very it was interesting. It was interesting, but uh, I yeah, you know, I focused most of my career on conventional business for for you know over thirty years ninety. 5% of my focus has been on, on brick and mortar, on things that are grounded in reality, on return on investment. And, and this ranch definitely does not fit within that category. Um, the, the investigation at Skinwalker Ranch and the topics that we are touching on really, uh, they stretch not only the imagination, but, but they challenge our very view of, of reality in the universe. Uh, it it's, does. it's an interesting project. And equipment malfunctions represent a continuous series of events on the ranch. And for many, including myself, they represent a huge part of the mystery there. It seems that there are so many that you could do an entire documentary or show just on that topic. What I would like to ask is if there's a log of equipment malfunctions that occur around the ranch being kept on file. And if so, is there a possibility of that being made public at any time in the near future? Good question. We we did keep a pretty strict log of equipment malfunctions associated with uh, visitors uh, and and researchers coming to the ranch uh, during the years preceding the docu series. So before we agreed, before I agreed to allow a docu series effort uh, on the ranch, we had been. You know, we'd been conducting investigations secretly for years, and I'd been privately funding that. And you know, one of the the first things that kept popping up involved the equipment malfunctions. I mean, we're talking about rapid battery depletion, and not just one type of battery, but a a diversity of battery types. We saw equipment that was damaged or completely malfunctioned, uh, seasoned. Uh, people, you know, researchers that would come out with very expensive equipment uh, in service to, to documenting, you know, the, the landscape and assisting us with, with establishing a baseline for our observational science effort, you know, were often found, you know, scratching their heads at how their equipment wasn't working and, and, and just constant issues. We experience that with regularity with respect to the docu-series effort. Uh, we're very fortunate to have so much redundancy. I mean, at any given time, we may have three or four cameras that are trying to capture the events, the experiments as they unfold, along with you know, state-of-the-art audio uh, drone you know, professionals that are you know, have multiple drones that are capturing footage. But it, it is not unusual that we have that equipment malfunctioning if we didn't have redundancy in place a lot of the events that we've been able to present to the public 
frankly, would be lost. And you know, I think we have a, a, I wish we had a little bit better log that we could present as far as a data log, uh, but someone has to actually fully organize all of the spreadsheets and all of that data and properly categorize it. Um, and I think that, you know, we're still working on that effort uh, before turning anything over uh, to the public. We're, we're really sifting through the data. And staying on the topic of equipment malfunctions, you mentioned the log you kept updated towards the start of the docu-series. Can you elaborate a bit about the various equipment being used to film the TV show? What kind of malfunctions have occurred? And also, if any of the film crew have come across with health issues or hitchhiker effect issues that you're able to talk about? Sure. I mean, we have state-of-the-art spectrum analyzers. I mean, it's it's... It's shown we have over 40 surveillance cameras, uh, night vision, thermographic imaging equipment. We have the state of the art FLIR camera system. We've also employed LIDAR and photogrammetry uh, in that we've gone back and actually you know, repeated experiments uh, in, in those areas. Uh, but uh, the scientific platforms that we've established really kind of report in from, from a, a number of different angles. Uh, we have a weather station on site that is monitoring the weather and we have multiple avionics receiving platforms as well, you know, monitoring the traffic coming in and out of the Uinta Basin and the surrounding area. So we can differentiate between that which is conventional or has some, some normal explanation that is flying in the sky and that which may truly be unexplained or anomalous. Uh, we, we, we take the investigation seriously and are constantly uh, improving the equipment, the scientific platforms, and the antennas, the, the instrumentation utilized in order to document the phenomena as it, uh, as it reveals itself. Uh, yeah, tri-field meters, those are the basics. Um, you're your other instrumentation that is that is more environment environmental uh, testing equipment um, is also important and has been a uh, a standard since the beginning. But it, you know, we have a, a, a ton of different platforms. I mean, you, you, Eric uh, refers to kind of his core system, the, the Satan platform. Uh, Sentinel uh, stand it stands for Sentinel Assignment and something telemetry node. I, I can't remember. I should have my notes with me, but he has a number of actual proprietary platforms that he has put together in service to monitoring the phenomena at Skinwalker Ranch. Um, Eve, which is his event viewer extraction uh, software packaging and, and the way that he actually is able to sift through the data and identify unique events that occur and, and to be able to separate the signal from the noise, you know, using some degree of artificial intelligence has been an, an important part of our investigative research. So it, it it's interesting. As for the hitchhiker effect, that's a completely different topic. And it's something that, that we have been tracking closely as far as the impact on not only our team members, but, you know, third party experts and participants. It was reported with the previous team, with Bigelow's team, that they would have um, hitchhikers or entities follow them home, uh, sometimes to the other side of the country. And these are former military officers or you know, battle-hardened uh, veterans that have served our country that, that ended up being accosted in their own homes and having their families terrorized by what can only be described as, in some cases, poltergeist-like uh, behavior or events and, and other dark forces that would descend upon them and, and really disturb them in their home environment or away from the ranch. Um, and we've seen some pretty disturbing correlations that have continued with, with respect to our team. Uh, Tom Winterton has gone on record with respect to several events recently that have occurred, and 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 we have a 
we have a, a lot of people both within our team and, and outside, outside of our team that have been keeping close track of what has happened. A lot of people say, well, where's the data? This is just, you're just, these are just anecdotal uh, events and accounts. Well, not true. We have surveillance footage. We, we have surveillance footage from Tom Winterton's house. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable. And- I was able to interview him for Shifting the Paradigm, and we spoke about the hitchhiker effect. And I have so many more questions for you about that specifically, but we yeah. are coming towards a break. We'll be right back after this. gigawatt paranormal powerhouse KUNX DB VX This is Micah Hanks of the Micah Hanks program right here on KUNX and right now you're having your paradigm shifted by the one and only Christina Gomez source for alternative talk radio on the internet vx howdy folks this is lou elizondo and you are listening to my very good friend christina gomez on shifting the paradigm do you have an interest in the paranormal then you'll love the unxnetwork.com the x is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural strange and mysterious like ufos bigfoot ghosts and so much more from hosts like jimmy church whitley streber micah hanks and christina gomez visit the unxnetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the x Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UNX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcasts. It's time. It's new. It's the X. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Explaining the unexplained. The new unxnetwork.com. Hi, hi. This is Race Hobbs, head of programming at the new Unex Network. And you're locked on Shifting the, the paradigm, paradigm with the intrepid Christina, Christina Gomez, Gomez on, on the X. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you are in the future because you're listening to Christina Gomez and Shifting the Paradigm. I'm gonna 
Welcome back. I'm here with Brandon Fugel, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch. And what I meant in the last question, more specifically, is the equipment used by the TV film crew themselves and the crew members effects on their audio and video equipment and also health effects or hitchhiker effects to the film crew. Yeah, it, it's all of the above. And I'm, I'm not making this up. I mean, we have so many people who've gone on record, uh, a number of our third party experts uh, that, that leave the ranch and have things follow them have gone on record uh, to their detriment. I mean, it, it, these people aren't looking for attention. They really aren't. They're not looking to, to sensationalize anything. And they're certainly not trying to draw negative attention to their lives or scrutiny, but they, to their credit, they're willing to be honest. And a lot of them are willing to go on record, thankfully, with with their experiences, their accounts, and the evidence that backs up a lot of their experience that go that goes into our data logs. Uh, we'd mentioned Thomas Winterton's you know, it's hitchhiker or poltergeist type activity. You know what the things that have followed him that have terrorized him and have left him unsettled, along with his children and his wife. Uh, defy any explanation, and much of which has been captured on camera. I, I believe it's on our Insider uh, portal on our website. We feature a number of these accounts and interviews and the evidence associated with with what has happened to team members, and and it, it's 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 uh, it's something that we're we're closely monitoring. Have any crew members refused to come back? Yes, several. What happened? Um, I not really going to say I'm going to respect their privacy. That's it's not my story to tell. Um, but yeah, we've had a number of people who have have refused to come back. I mean, I I, I offered Bob Bigelow the opportunity to come out to the ranch as well as a several of the people who had served on the ranch prior to to my acquisition and they've not only refused but have been adamant in the fact that they have no desire to ever set foot on that property again i totally understand about their privacy but that's that shocking i mean it's really scary actually yeah i i i we always hope that nothing negative will will attend any of our experiments or our research and and heaven forbid something negative follow people home but it seems to be a reality and part of the risk and the liability associated with this research and it's it's sobering uh i'm fortunate i i haven't had this happen to me i haven't had the hitchhiker effect um impact me or or follow me uh, home, or and I'm thankful for that. But uh, I, several of our team members and and also other participants have uh, have have continued to have really disturbing things happen to them. And what about your family members? Well, for one, I I'll never allow my children to come out to the ranch. I I really am not comfortable with uh, with my my uh, my children. I mean, my my wife has been there. She's she's taken an active role with respect to some of the legal uh, elements associated with uh, adamantium real estate and and interfacing with with you know different entities and uh, and organizations that we're working collaboratively with. But I I this isn't a place where uh, we're. I, where we will ever offer public tours, I will never allow under my stewardship public access or tours simply because A, the liability issues are just too great. People have been hurt. Uh, we've continued to see mysterious illnesses, injuries that are unexplained. And, and, and B, we are conducting a year round sensitive scientific investigation. Uh, we we really don't want that disrupted or compromised in any way, and I I have no desire to exploit 
this property or or open it up because of you know those two key drivers. Um, I, I'll go on record again. I have never taken a penny personally relative to the docu series effort. I haven't even opened a bank account for Adamantium Real Estate. Why? Because I I I've transferred transfer that or assigned any benefit to to essentially infrastructure or philanthropic type of uh, efforts. I, I have no desire uh, to monetize the property. I, I do want to see my po people properly compensated. I mean, they don't work for free. Eric Bard, who is who is on constant vigil, who is working harder than any scientist that I've ever met in my life. And I've met and worked with a lot of people in the science community. I've funded a lot of, I think, exciting scientific endeavors. And I've never met anyone that works as hard as Eric Bard. And, and I, I will say Tom Winterton uh, as a superintendent, I mean, this is a guy who at 2, 3 a.m. will be out there doing water turns and making sure that the physical facilities, that the ranch, which is a, a, an operating ranch is properly cared for. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts to this diverse landscape. This 512 acre piece of property is surprisingly diverse. You know, when I first saw it, I flew into my helicopter, you know, days before closing on the transaction with Robert Bigelow. And as we, as we landed in the field right there, just South of Homestead one and the security trailer I was in awe of the striking landscape, this beautiful backdrop with this, this red rock mesa with, with cave systems, with you know, the, 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 you know, the old pioneer homesteads that are clustered uh, in various portions of the property. I mean, there's, there's some really beautiful waterways. Uh, there's a little creek that runs through uh, a portion of the property. And I, I, I fell in love with it. I, I, I thought, wow, this is, this is not just a barren patch of, uh, of dirt out in the middle of nowhere. It, it really is a, uh, a strikingly beautiful piece of property in my opinion. Uh, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's interesting in that it, it isn't your average piece of property or average piece of real estate. Take the paranormal any of these unexplained incidents out of it, and you're really left with a a beautiful scenic piece of property. You mentioned cave systems, so there are actual cave openings on the ridge. There are, there are. Um, there's there are a couple of places where there are caves, and there are a number of areas where caves have caved in where. There were caves and, you know, the, the boulders, you know, the, the shifts in the landscape have, have ended up obstructing uh, some of those features where we are digging into exploring some of those aspects of the landscape as our research continues. Have they been fully explored or are there dangers preventing that? There are dangers there is there is more exploration to be done and uh, a key part of our investigation is really delving into uh, aspects associated with the terrain with the with the mesa plateau uh, especially that which is within close proximity to the infamous triangle so back to the malfunctions what is the prevailing theory regarding the equipment malfunctions some have speculated that electrical interference from nearby power lines could be a source while others have speculated on highly magnetic deposits in the rock and soil there can you shed any light on these speculations <laughs> i think people fail to recognize that it's transient in nature i mean it, it is not predictable it is transient and the, the electromagnetic anomalies that occur will, will, will suddenly occur on one piece of prop piece of the property. I mean, they'll occur over at Homestead three and then, then in minutes later or instantaneously, you know, another member of the team will be uh, up uh, above the Mesa and experience uh, the same type of uh, malfunction or at least disruptive uh, activity. 
And it's, it's not, I, I don't believe that it's necessarily tied to the geology of the property, even though I thought that there was going to be a natural explanation and, and you could attribute the luminous phenomena to or everything from earthquake lights to ball lightning to, you know, any number of, uh, I think, reasonable natural explanations. We've found that we're left with more questions than any answers. And, uh, and it's, it's really unpredictable. People say, well, you must have radioactive material on the site. You know, why are you putting people in harm's way if you're sitting on a, on a radioactive site? And they don't understand. We've tested the soil countless times. In fact, before we run any test, we have experts. I mean, we've had the experts from Qualtech on numerous occasions come out both preceding and also following uh, various activities in order to, to environmentally test the area. And not only have we found that, it, that, that it's, it's completely unpredictable and that there is nothing that we can point to as a, as a natural cause, it's, it's so elusive and it's intense. The, the amount of electromagnetic energy the, the amount of, uh, of force and, and frankly, the, the anomalies that, that we are documenting in detail speak to something very extraordinary um, occurring. There is something extraordinary. The, the origin associated, the, the nature of what we are experiencing so far, um, it, it eludes us. We, we, we haven't reached any definitive conclusion. I receive criticism all the time. You know, people say, well, you're, you're making claims. You're claiming that it, it's aliens, that extraterrestrials are visiting, that there's some alien exotic technology. And I'm like, no, we, we haven't made any definitive claim or statement. Th has there been speculation? Absolutely. That, you know, that's part of forming a hypothesis is you're, you're, you're asking questions and you're speculating as to what the potential cause would be, or well, what is the nature of it? And then you form an experiment to be able to test that. And, and we, we are truly trying to, to follow the scientific method, even when the scientific method is, is, is very difficult to follow at times when you're dealing with something that is so transient and so um, dynamic in nature. Brandon, let's talk about the 1.6 gigahertz signal. Where is your team at with research into this since all these months after the end of filming the last season? Have you had any breakthroughs with potential sources? And is this still a regular phenomenon? Uh, does it attend experiments? Do, does this signal appear to, to follow or appear in concert with other activity? Absolutely. Am I ready to make any statement or even speculate at this point? Not really. I, I think right now that is an active part of our investigative, our investigative effort. Um, and I'm probably, I'm going to have to defer to my scientists and third party experts who are delving into that uh, in order to better understand what we are recording, what we are documenting, and 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 to be able to determine what what is really unusual, what really constitutes you know something that is that is unusual or outside of the norm or can't be can't be assigned some conventional mundane cause. So it, we're delving into that. I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for. But uh, I'm really not at liberty to expound on that any further other than it is a it is a key priority that we are currently, I mean, this day uh, exploring and, and investigating. And we hope to bring more data to the table and more insight that will help um, that will help, I think, shed some light on the, on why we believe that this is extraordinary. I, I can understand that, and I cannot wait to find out more about it in the future. Now, from the time of purchase of the ranch up until the concept of the TV show was proposed, 
you have often indicated that you started out as a skeptic with curiosity. And I'm curious if during that time period, you had your doubts and considered turning it around and selling it. Or was it the case that enough strange phenomena occurred that you never thought about giving up and selling it, knowing that you had to see the investigation through to a conclusion? Yeah, well, the first six months, so I acquired the property the first week of April 2016. For six months, I did not personally experience or witness anything unusual on the property. Now, we 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 have photographic and videographic evidence of of activity, but I was not going to make any conclusions. I was still very skeptical and 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 actually trying to assign natural cause, you know, some prosaic explanation. Uh, it was only after about six months, almost exactly six months following my purchase that my entire perspective changed and I witnessed phenomena. I, I witnessed, witnessed things with, with people by my side, other uh, witnesses uh, that, that I, I, to this day, uh, can't explain and cannot deny. Uh, that experience, that fateful day drove me to double down and to invest heavily in the infrastructure and the scientific platforms to document that which I knew to be real. I ceased being a, an open-minded skeptic and I, I really wasn't a believer anymore. I shifted from being an open-minded skeptic to an experiencer literally in one day. And we conducted our investigation for years following that in secrecy. And the you know, producers from the History Channel you know, per, you know, started knocking on our door, were calling, reaching out to, to my team. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know who owned the ranch, but they were reaching out to Jim Morse and Thomas Winterton primarily in order to, to get an audience to to present a proposal to document the, the reality of our investigation. And for a year of, of weekly requests, I denied the request. I had no interest in meeting with anyone or entertaining the, the docu-series effort. I, I, had, I, I had really grown just focused on uh, scientific investigation and did not want the distraction. And I, I frankly didn't want my identity uh, revealed or even the risk of it going public. Um, and it was only after a year of persistence that I uh, reluctantly agreed to take a meeting and the rest is history. Uh, we, you know, I, I was persuaded to open the gates and to allow this unprecedented docu-series effort to, to, to let the public in and, and show them and it's gotten some serious attention. Now, for those who have slept on the ranch, have you heard about the dreams of those individuals, night terrors or disturbing dreams, and also any occurrences of individuals sleepwalking or waking up in a different place to where someone fell asleep? Yeah, it, there have been regular occurrences or regular accounts of night terrors, people, uh, having very disturbing dreams, you know, waking uh, in a in a sweat, you know, with their their pulse racing, uh, and it, it 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 impacts people differently. I've continued to tell people to enter the ranch with a degree of reverence and humility, uh, to be prayerful, and. I find that if people prepare themselves consciously, if they armor themselves, if you will, they, they, they seem to fare better. Uh, but it, it, it impacts people differently. And we, we've had some, some people go on record with, with, disturbing, with disturbing experiences. Uh, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Taylor's life has been changed, has been altered forever. Here is a guy, you know, two PhDs, 
three master's degrees. The guy has five advanced degrees in physics, engineering. Uh, he's published, worked on projects with NASA, with the Defense Department. I mean, it was just revealed recently that he was the chief scientist for the Pentagon's UAP task force. Dr. Taylor is a highly credentialed, qualified scientist. And his perspective has completely changed since the first day I met him. I mean, it, he's, he's done a 180. And, and a lot of that, it, it has been a deeply personal uh, and in some cases disturbing experience for him. Uh, but as, as an explorer, I applaud his willingness to keep coming back, to, to engage with the team. And, and that holds true with everyone. I mean, Thomas Winterton, who ended up in the emergency room and almost died. I mean, his family was called in uh, by the doctors to, to visit him under the, the premise that he, his condition was worsening by the minute. And Tom, of all people, would be justified in never returning to that ranch, but he is hell-bent on getting to the bottom of what we are dealing with. That's really at the heart of our investigation. We wanna know what the hell we are dealing with. Brandon, we are coming towards another break. Hang tight, we'll be right back. gigawatt paranormal powerhouse KUNX DB BX This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black and you are in the future because you're listening to Christina Gomez and Shifting the Paradigm Thank all of you for listening to The X. But did you know you can watch live streaming video and catch your favorite video casts on the Unex Network YouTube channel? Wow, you mean I can watch The X shows anytime? That's right. Watch any show anytime, even binge watch your favorite programs. Which shows are on the Unex Network YouTube channel? You can watch Most Haunted with Dan Terry, Entity Voices, Paranormal Evidence, Paranormally Blonde, and Unexplained Phenomena All Street and many more. Also, be sure and catch live coverage of special events and special broadcasts from the Unex Network. That's great. I'm going to subscribe to the Unex Network channel right now. Awesome. You can find everything you need to know about the YouTube channel at unexnetwork.com. That's unexnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for everything unexplained. It's the new mainstream. It's the Unex Network. Explaining the unexplained. The new unexnetwork.com. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Gold loves chaos, uncertainty, and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about 
about the stock market, we can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. of disclosure, I often point out my opinion that if the truth is going to come out about a non-human intelligent origin to the UFO topic, it's more likely to come from the research being done at Skinwalker Ranch as opposed to the U.S. government. To that end, you and your team have been hard at work during the last few months making the research and results at the ranch available to the public via the Insider Project. Can you please tell us your mission and the vision for this and why people should get involved? Uh, thank you. I, the Insider Project really grew out of hundreds, maybe thousands of requests that we've received over the last several years from people that are extremely interested in not only seeing a live feed and being able to, to, to see for themselves 24-7 the skies over Skinwalker Ranch or the environment, uh, but also people who are sincerely wanting to be part of the research and engage with the team. And so the, the team, the, the insider uh, portal that is on our website, which is www.skinwalker-ranch.com, is the vehicle for the team to engage after hours, off season, and, and independently with researchers and with the general public to help them not only better understand what is happening, but also share insights and, and frankly, experiences and data that we just don't have the ability to, to convey on the docu-series or on a blog or, or other medium. Um, it's, it's a testament to my team's commitment that they're willing to do it. Um, I didn't ask them. They came to me. I want to be very clear. I'm not, I, I will never take a penny from the effort. It, it goes right into to compensating them for, for their time after hours and their efforts and also into to helping with you know, subsidizing some of the costs associated with those efforts and hosting. But, uh, but it, it's something that the team brought to me that they really wanted to make available uh, in order to better engage the public. And so I, I reluctantly, like like everything else, it took me months before I finally acquiesced and um, agreed agreed to do it. And I think it's a great resource. Uh, I mean, where else on the planet like this would you have not only a 24-7 live feed of the environment, but also the ability to interact with its principal investigator, chief scientist, and other researchers there on site in the middle of the actual research program being conducted. Uh, I challenge anyone to show me 
uh, another effort like this. It just simply doesn't exist. And I think it's, it's a rare opportunity. I'm shocked that more people aren't taking advantage of it, but I don't really care. I mean, I, I do, but I don't, I, I, it just like the docu series, the scientific research would be, it, it, it was, it was going on long before the television cameras arrived and it, it will continue after they stop rolling. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something I'm passionate about and I, I just want the truth. And it is an unprecedented level of transparency and involvement and already has a wonderful international community of individuals participating with your team members in the live yeah. chat of the cameras you have monitored in the ranch. And, um, I have it on multiple monitors around my workplace. I will place the link up here and also in the more information section below to the free trial website page for you to find out more. So, now, hey, Christina, I have to ask you, have you have you been able to interact in the live chat with, yes, with, with our chief scientist, with Eric Bard? Yes, I mean, sir. How cool is that? I mean, it's, it's so cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm not I'm, I'm saying this as more of a proud father. I, I, I'm not boasting of it. I, I just think that there's nothing like it. I, I don't know that people fully realize how special this moment is and how special this resource is. And this isn't me sales pitching it. It's me saying, gosh, thousands of people have been asking for it and we delivered. And the team, I have to give credit to my team. The team has stepped up and they are contributing content Yep. on a regular basis and engaging with the public in a way that you just don't see with any other research effort. Not at all. And and honestly, it's candid, it's raw, it's revealing. And it feels like I'm part of the research and, and the team and like, you know, family spirit, you know, Doc, Dr. Taylor drops in the live chat and so does <laughs> Caleb and Thomas. And it's so cool because you really feel like you are a part of the yeah. team. And, and it's not fake. It's not it's contrived. Not fake. These are real people. These aren't actors. These aren't people that are trying to to, to be famous. These are people that are just a down to earth, sincere group of individuals that bring different skill sets to the table in order to, to really service discovery. And, and I love these, these people, they are, they are my family. They are, uh, they're incredible and they, and they really do complement each other. I mean, to have Candace Lindy, a published credentialed anthropologist stationed there full time, um, year round, coming on camera with the docu series and putting her reputation and her cred credentials on the line as, yeah. as the caretaker and anthropologist is a big deal. But then you look at the team and you look at our security, you look at Caleb, who is active law enforcement. Get that, everyone. He is active law enforcement. Caleb is, is serving out there in the basin and he's working both jobs. He's working part-time for us and doing shifts with us in tandem with working with the law enforcement community uh, in the sheriff's department. He is, he is remarkably engaged and candid and open, and he's willing to, to, to help people understand the reality of what we're, what we're, we, what we are experiencing. I mean, I can go down the whole list, but you know, Eric Bard, who is really, uh, the championing the science platforms and and making sure that the public is being able to see this in real time deserves so much credit. He absolutely does. And you have several live camera feeds 24 seven and logging anomalies to a spreadsheet. I mean, I just love it so much. Yeah. But I, I do want to shift gears to my favorite topic in relation to the mysteries at Skinwalker Ranch, and that's portals. It's such an attention grabber for me. You had a retired Navajo Ranger, John Dover, on the show talking about the First Nation tribe's petroglyphs on the ridge that depict swirls being interpreted as illustrations of portals. There are alleged stories during the Bigelow era of scientists seeing portals and creatures emerging from them and different skies being seen on the other side. Even Eric Bard in Season 3, Episode 6 captured a high-altitude anomaly for all intents and purposes manifested as a classic opening and closing 
closing portal or a mouth of a wormhole on an upward looking camera. Yeah. So I would like to hear your input on the potential of these being actual portals. And have you had any feedback from mainstream physicists or scientists not connected to the TV show or ranch that has enlightened you with good insights? Constantly. In fact, we've received a flood of input, of commentary from credentialed physicists, research scientists, and, uh, and others that have not only uh, been watching closely what we've been doing, but also have offered uh, their expertise and their perspectives, which we appreciate. Uh, you look at so many different uh, experiments that we have that we have brought to the public's attention. I mean, you look at the FLIR camera, uh, the thermographic imaging technology that we employed in service to the rabbis uh, experiment out at Homestead too, and the way the environment changed and literally the doorway into Homestead too was was a black freezing cold space in the middle of the summer. And the environmental change that took place in a matter of seconds in tandem with the rabbinical chant and the environment that was created with the team is something that I, I have yet to hear any conventional explanation for. And to have that repeated and people always say, oh, you're not repeating, you're not following the scientific method, but BS. We came back and we repeated that experiment. We, we played back the audio and guess what happened? The same change rate essentially occurred in reverse as far as the environmental changes and other things happened and appeared and were captured on camera from multiple viewpoints. That is indisputable. I'm so proud of the effort to capture these anomalies for the first time in many cases on camera. And you look at orbs, that have been captured. I mean, the orb that uh, that was self-luminous that was captured in front of Homestead Two and revealed, you know, toward the end of season three. Uh, it has baffled scientists, investigators, uh, the world over, and we we're really excited to reveal even more. Since you acquired the ranch, aside from what has been shown on the TV show, have any of your team members or yourself even witnessed any phenomena that could directly be attributed to a portal opening? And is is there more footage that might be forthcoming? Because Eric Bard has said that the anomaly seen in season three, episode six, repeated on several occasions. Yeah, it, to be fair no one really knows what a portal looks like. I mean, what, how that would manifest definitively. I mean, we're in frontier science waters here. Uh, are, are, are the observations made and that which is documented consistent with various theories that have been advanced by the scientific community regarding portal activity? Yes. I believe that what we are seeing is consistent on a number of occasions with what people have theorized. Uh, and, and, and I think the only way that we can continue to shed light on that is by not only taking the data, but, but working to, to, to better understand and bring other scientific instrumentation to bear in, in order to, to not only document it, but also understand what other changes are happening you know, are, are occurring in the environment. We do know that you know, we've seen gravitational anomalies, we've seen electromagnetic anomalies uh, occur simultaneous with unidentified aerial phenomena or UFO activity. And even some of the, the, the activity that we've captured in the sky, I mean, you look at the experiments with the, with the astronomical society. I, I encourage anyone who is sincere, that is very interested in these topics, go watch the episode and our, our account of bringing the Salt Lake Astronomical Society to the property in order 
to utilize their very expensive equipment and their expertise in order to, to document what was happening above the ranch and in the area of the triangle in tandem with both advanced rocketry and laser experiments. And, and it is nothing short of astonishing. Uh, and again, these people, there is no motivation for them to go on record acknowledging that they have witnessed UFOs or that they have witnessed unusual activity, even their own equipment meddled with in ways that are unexplained within a closed system to have their software, to have their equipment completely uh, manipulated. And all of that captured on camera and we have the data. I, I, I just, uh, I, I think that this is unprecedented. I know that that word comes up a lot and can, can often be overplayed, but in this case, I challenge anyone to, uh, to differ with me. Well, what you said, that's a good answer. We are in very uncharted territory with this. And all we have as a base point graphically is what we've seen in fictional TV shows and movies. So this is a new frontier, but is allegedly happening in other places in the United States and around the world. Related to this and unusual side effects of possible portals, I follow the work of ex-law enforcement officer David Politis, researcher and author of The Missing Four on one series of books and documentaries and he has reviewed episodes of your show on his channel and he has stated that cases he has researched of missing people have significant parallels with phenomena occurring on your ranch are we likely to see some form of collaboration in the future perhaps i i i actually have great respect for for david politis's work uh he has courageously brought forward evidence that there is something very disturbing going on in our national parks, that there are thousands. I, I mean, there, there are so many people that not only are, are missing, but there's no trace in some cases, or they end up reappearing in, in the most unusual of circumstances and conditions. And, uh, I find his research intriguing. I'm not quite sure what parallels can be drawn at the end of the day definitively, but uh, this is all frontier uh, science exploration. And I think those who are willing to stick their necks out and ask the hard questions and be willing to, to take a step into the darkness, to, to put their reputations on the line and really, uh, really be involved with, uh, with research that a lot of people uh, shun or they're just not I think that people are curious for the most part but I think willing you know most people are not willing to to take it a step further and actually execute on that or or really expand on that curiosity and um, I, I I think a hallmark of our investigation and really my stewardship with Skinwalker Ranch is our willingness to collaborate this is a collaborative, multidisciplinary effort. We have brought so many third-party experts on the property to collaborate with the team, to, to bring expertise and resources to help us not only document, but better understand the nature and, and stand as witness to it. Uh, it's, it's an exciting effort and one that has a, a, a diversity of, of participants. So I'm guessing your team has uh, captured a lot of UFO footage, which didn't make the TV show and since filming ended. Can you tell us about some of those more impressionable sightings and will you be releasing it in some kind of archive on the Insider website in the future? Potentially. I, we, we capture a lot of unidentified flying objects, a lot of UFO and UAP activity that that never gets presented to the public simply because uh, in a lot of cases, we we believe that that there may be a conventional explanation for it. And we don't want to put material out there uh, that would excite the public or mislead the public. I, I have no interest in in presenting anything that is that is in any way contrived 
uh, and and we try to vet that accordingly. Um, I I think observation observational science is is a priority associated with our effort and and really taking data. Uh, we're not holding anything back materially. I mean, we're trying to present, I think, the most noteworthy, in most cases, evidence and experiences. But there, there's so much that we are cataloging, that we are recording. And there are a lot of experiences, even disturbing experiences, that we haven't revealed, that we don't report on, that frankly is not appropriate for the docu-series. There are certain events that occur, certain experiences that people have had that the History Channel believes to be either inappropriate or, and I, maybe inappropriate is not the right term, but they don't, they're just not comfortable with it uh, being presented. And, and, and we have to respect people's privacy as well. I mean, there, there are certain things that happen to people that uh, that in many cases are not made public. Tom Winterton, Tom Lewis, Caleb, Travis, Dr. Taylor, they're unique. I mean, for them to come forward and be very candid and open with, with respect to what has happened to them negatively with, with, with respect to their engagement with Skinwalker Ranch is, is unique. There are, there are a host of people that are not willing to come forward and don't want their names uh, put out in the public. There are even people that have had experiences on this property predating the Shermans and Bigelow's ownership. Going back, I mean, we're talking decades before any of this that actually witnessed things on this property that are hesitant to come forward because they don't want to be ridiculed. They don't want to be swept up in these topics. I mean, it, it took quite a bit of, of persistence to get, you know, former deputy sheriff, Chris Porat to come out and go on record relative to the multiple incidents that he responded to back in the um, early to mid 1980s when he was serving in the sheriff's office and had a relationship with Kenneth Myers uh, to have him go public and, and give a detailed account of his experiences and what was shared with him. I mean, that's data. I don't, that's, and it's compelling. You couple that with other witness testimony and it, it starts to create a, uh, a picture a, a broad tapestry that uh, that illustrates the the unique nature of this mysterious piece of property. It really is mysterious. And what's interesting is that Thomas Winterton mentioned in an interview several weeks back that experiences almost seem tailor-made for specific people when they enter the ranch. The same question I asked him, I want to ask you, do you see this as proof that a trickster intelligence is at work or something more neutral, like what quantum physics hints at, the uncertainty principle acting out for some unknown reason via the mysteries of human consciousness the experiencer themselves is entering some kind of energetic field and becomes the one influencing the phenomenon to personalize a tailor-made experience they go through what's your personal impression and opinion about this aspect well uh, consciousness definitely plays a key role in what is occurring on the property we're also dealing with entities and phenomena that that that, that are definitely a, a few steps ahead of us. We are not in control. That is clear. Uh, the The forces that we are dealing with have command over space time, over the environment in a way that is unexplained, that is baffling and disturbing. We truly are dealing with advanced physics. 
people often ask me, well, are, 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 do you think you're dealing with something that is b- benevolent? Is it malevolent? You know, is it good, evil? Is it neutral or benign? And, and the, the truthful answer is yes, all of the above. We have an enormous data set now showing that we're dealing with a diversity of phenomena and, and for lack of a better term, entities uh, associated with, with, with the ranch. There is an intelligence that we are interacting with that is very elusive that I think could be characterized as a trickster of sorts. Uh, Our predecessors called it a precognitive, non-human, sentient intelligence. And I think that is probably an appropriate description for much of what we are interacting with. But to see unidentified flying objects or or unidentified aerial phenomena occurring and witnessed and documented simultaneous with electromagnetic anomalies, acute medical episodes, and no assignable cause or no no conventional origin is compelling. And final question. Since taking ownership of the ranch, you have stated that you've gone through all the stages from being a skeptic to a believer and finally an experiencer. That's quite a journey. Can you relate one or two key events, the most memorable occurrences that took you to where you are today? And I know that you have many stories that you can tell, but I'd I'd like for you to focus on the dramatic experiences that really shifted your paradigm in an instant. Yeah, well, the most profound, compelling, life-changing experience happened in October of 2016 when following documented electromagnetic anomalies and other strange events that were occurring in the company of several individuals, in fact, two security professionals that were accompanying a a visiting dignitary, I saw a, what can only be described as a flying saucer, a silver grayish disc-like object that was hovering It was stationary, really, above the Mesa Plateau in broad daylight right in front of us as we were in this open-air Polaris Ranger that we continue to to have on the property along with our other other vehicles. To watch this object in front of us, right above the Mesa, literally change position in the blink of an eye and do so as if it was even like it was monitoring us. And then within 20 seconds be gone in a split second, like a bullet shooting off in the distance was life changing. Uh, The other individuals who I'd never met before that day, I haven't met them and I haven't visited with them since. Eric Bard has followed up with them and individually, I mean, you was able to transcribe their, their um, witness accounts, which by the way, are exactly consistent, identical to mine. It's, it's something that you can't unsee. I can't deny it. To deny it is 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 to be is to be dishonest and it it was a very unique compelling event that that transformed me from a, from being a, an open-minded skeptic to an experiencer it isn't a a matter of belief anymore when people ask me well, do you believe in the reality of the ufo phenomenon do you believe in ufos and i said no i it's not a it's not a matter of belief. I know I've seen it with my own eyes in broad daylight, right in front of us. I mean, this was a 40, 50 foot long object that moved in ways that defy any conventional exp- explanation. I mean, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a very compelling experience and accompanied by all of these other anomalies. I mean, I, my cell phone, my iPhone went from 80% to zero 
along with several others preceding this event. And that's all, I mean, we documented that. I mean, we, there's a history associated with, with these events that, that, uh, that is, I think, unimpeachable. Oh my gosh, that is unbelievable. And this time flew by. I wish I had a two hour longer format for my show on KUNX because I have so many more questions. Brandon, thank you so much for your time. I definitely hope we can do a part two in the near future. Where can people find you online to stay up to date with your efforts? Yeah, very easy on Twitter at Brandon Fugel, uh, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-F-U-G-A-L. I'm also active on Instagram, same handle essentially uh for those in business uh i do have an active linkedin profile that is primarily centered on my my conventional business activities but i do uh from time to time update uh the public and the business community relative to skinwalker ranch and our research uh, and also some of the other scientific endeavors that i'm leading and funding uh, so I, I welcome uh, people to, to follow our journey and appreciate uh, everyone's interest. I, I really do uh, find it humbling uh, and and consider this a a, a really um, special opportunity to be the steward of this uh, unique piece of property, even with all the negativity, uh, even with all of the um, disturbing things that we've experienced this is science discovery at its best it is. and i i i think that we're we're on the verge of some major breakthroughs and and insights that will reshape our view of reality our world and the universe and i appreciate you uh having me on and look forward to continuing the journey thanks brandon you're listening to the UnX Network, KUNX DV, Kansas City, Missouri.